Testing, one, two, three. This is Flash at the Dork Table on the Saturday, 27th of October, 2018. And, and we're waiting for Rob Works to get back, so we're going to just have a little giggle and stall, say hey to people in the first few minutes of the Dork Table podcast on the Real Liberty Media Dot com. And we're going to start out with the hellos here and say hi to Barman, Grimner, Miss Kate, Asmo, Hello Honey, Circle, <laughs> Chloe, <laughs> Chloe doesn't listen, uh, Cyborg Noodle, D underscore C, hey Don, Echelon, myself, another Don, Ansel, Poxified, Pox Phone, Pone Sauce Rain, R-L-M underscore fluke. Rome's Skittle. Vinny. The Phantom. Beetle. Colfax 101. Frumpy. Grams. Gramsy's working. Java Doctor 2. Jays Nines. Jays. Kozu. Mm-hmm, and Sock Puppet. And that's the crew we got on the Real Liberty Media dot com chat so you got somebody to chat with while i'm talking to myself about all these important things that go on in the world let's see hmm. i guess today me and rob we're gonna uh, do a little bit on uh the coming and going of the new guy art under uh what was his name art underground, underground. Yeah, I, I knew it was under something. I couldn't remember. Thanks, sir. I couldn't remember. Told you I'm really bad with names. Anyway, so uh, the consensus apparently is he didn't like the anarchist buzz in the chat room. Well, it's a few people that don't like that. You know? I don't think they really understand what exactly thinking an anarchist way means because they're not doing it so i mean if i was going to be supporting say trump or hillary or obama or whatever the case bush uh, i don't see how you could hold an allegiance to a lying thieving scumbag of that caliber and at the end of it understand what being responsible for yourself has to do with politics because uh seems to me anyway politics is just taking the it's taken the the individual out of everything and replaced it with a group and if you don't go along with the group the group will well what will the group do i don't think anything but apparently the society that i came from and most of the society that i'm in there are a lot of flag wavers here a lot of people loyal to their queen and all that i see it in the uh, in the display and the expression of society, you know, but the people don't behave. Um, they're not as demanding here as I'm accustomed to in the English speaking world. <laughs> but, but then again, I don't really speak very well, you know, speak very good English. I don't speak well at all. And I know that. Oh, don't worry about all that. Um, don't be 30 seconds late and miss the whole opening. Yeah, no, nah, the dork table's more of a... It, it's not a place to go to be brought in to what's going on in the world in any serious fashion. Uh, what I see is just this big, great big clusterfuck and a lot of people being lied to about everything. And... They only seem to have the ability to to look at certain things. Certain things are lies, but everything else is true. And I'm in that, hey, Beetle, I'm in that small group of people that says, you know, if you're going to lie about one thing, what difference does it make if the other things are true? They're poisoning the water with fluoride. Okay, so if that in itself is true, what does it matter if they're not lying about anything else? But we all know the truth about that. <laughs> Everything they say is bullshit. And I wish Rob was here to back me up on that because he said, and I will quote him, and they all suck. But he says it with a, a long A. <laughs> Come on, Rob. I'm, I was expecting some help 
on the Dork Table program today, and I'm not seeming to get it. So we'll stall a little bit more. Let me think about what's going on. It's been a very uneventful um, end of summer, beginning of... I don't know what to call the season I'm in. It just abruptly gets cold and dark from 12 hours of sun every day to... Now it's it's not even light until 8 in the morning. It was light at 3 in, what, June, I think. It was 3 a.m. The sun's up. <laughs> and now here we are in November, and it's 8 o'clock, and the sun, it doesn't come out. It's just uh, overcast and dreary looking. Like it's threatening to, well, it did rain today. Usually it just threatens to rain. And we don't get a whole lot of rain. Hmm. Isn't that just freaking wonderful? But anyway, so I started out the the dork table today, not so much um, bashing art, but the way that I heard things go, I figured the guy would welcome opposing viewpoints. You know, he was seemed very status to me. He was all about you know uh, building walls and arming them heavily and shooting anything that doesn't do what it's told and. Yeah, Beetle, I hope you're playing around with all that. I don't believe you. I, I think you're just playing. But if you're a psycho, I think you should go arm up and go out there and make a stand. Don't do it in a chat room wasting your fucking time. Get out there and be somebody, for crying out loud. I mean, is anybody but me tired of these armchair quarterbacks that they want everybody else to do the dirty work while they sit on a computer and type? Because I don't want anybody to get killed at all if they can, you know, avoid it. Mm. Oh, okay, Beetle. Well, let them in, shoot them. It's all the same. To, all right. To me, it's all a bunch of crap. Because the Fed is, um, it's an illusion. You either, you believe this shit and not, how do you explain this to other people? Um, not that there's not a physical reality to it, but if you don't have mass quantities of fiat or property or some commodity that these bankers want a piece of, nobody gives a shit about you. So it's a whole lot easier to not amass a fortune in life and just get through it than it is to go out there and step on everybody and take and take and take and gather and gather and hoard and hoard and hoard so that someday you can brag to everybody about how much shit you have and belittle them for all the shit they don't have. Eh, I don't I don't care to play that game so much myself. I think it's kind of useless. Mm. It does make a point in the, you know, in the finance driven economy world that we got. But I'm going to stay with uh not speaking Danish enough to get into a conversation about anything that fucking matters outside of going to the bar. And even in the bar, the, if we disagree, it it's not life changing. Nobody gives a fuck. Okay, so you see it a different way. You might be a dumbass, but you know that's your problem. Not uh, immediately screaming and yelling and get out. That's pretty much what you get in the states these days. I saw a video link of Nancy. I think it was Nancy Pelosi trying to sneak in the side of some restaurant where she goes to. And they had a crowd of people with cameras standing there, okay, and brow bashing her and calling her the names as she snuck into the restaurant. And they put it on YouTube for, for uh, I guess, all the anarchists to see because the people that play this political game, if you're against it, then that just makes your dick hard because you saw, you know, a bunch of idiots harassing some old woman that thinks she's better than everybody else and if you're not for it well then oh they're they're picking on that poor lady and it both sides are wrong why is she sneaking in a fucking restaurant anyway hey mental pancakes just showed up it's good to see dork cakes hanging around at the dork table good to see a dork but i don't I don't think I'd participate in shit like that if it was available to me. Um, being nasty to people is, it's also, how do you, I guess it's how you interpret what you hear. Because what I say, most people disagree with everything I tell them 
or they don't like the the tone I carry. <laughs> I've been accused of that so many times. I laugh at it now. I don't like your tone, Mister. And what what do you want me to do? Break out in like a, you know a deeper voice so you can uh, really hear it. But you know what I mean. Tone. Now we got typing. So if you use your cap lock, you really want to piss somebody off. Hit your type lock and call them sweetheart. <laughs> Especially if they're of your own gender. They tend to get quiet after that part. They don't go anywhere, but they, they simmer down a little bit. I have a friend on the reallibertymedia.com that I chitter-chatter with in that fashion. But um, ah, this week I've been kind of ignoring him. I'm bored. And then this art thing. Wow, they just put the whole re Republican side of this game, that the political game, in, in just a better light. Because, you know, Grimm would never tell you, hey, you can't say that on my radio program. I've said the most outrageous shit that I could think of, sometimes on purpose, and I've never been told, hey, you can't do the radio. So... Quitting the radio would only be a... You get frustrated doing this. I, I know that from my own experience. I've told Cirque and I've told Mary, I don't want to do this anymore. And then I calm down and get my composure back. And, you know, we all have a bad moment and just don't want to do something. But to actually go through with it. <laughs> and then, excuse me, and then over, over opposing opinion... I read in chat that it came down to uh, <clears throat> he wasn't going to tolerate anarchist scum dis uh, what is that again dis disrespecting his republic and uh, hmm. my first concept came to me was wow what republic do you speak of their sport because there's no fucking republic you live in the USA that's it's anything but it's I think it's a totalitarian dictatorship controlled by big fucking government. So it's fascism, I suppose, right? Mm. Uh oh, somebody's posting on the RLM. I guess it's Hansel because I don't see anything. Uh I can't say that, I can't say that. Well, Grimner, you know what? I'm gonna say it. <laughs> but anyhow, I it was just kind of amazed me that instead of, you know, standing his ground and speaking his mind, which he offered all of us the opportunity to do on the radio, that uh, he would just, you know, laugh off the people that, that don't see it his way. I didn't think he'd get pissy and split over it. <laughs> I mean, I understand it. I'm not insane, but I don't agree with I think... You know, you could have just took, I'm going to take a couple of days off and, you know, gather my senses because, you know, it, this isn't for everybody to do in the first place. It's difficult to tell other people the way you really feel about the existence that we're sharing. And we're sharing it through the electronic worlds. So whether I'm physically at home or not, um, my children still live there. My family, my extended relatives that I've got, got hundreds of them. They all live in the United States from one side of the country to the other. I'm just not um, officially a part of the family because of the decisions I've made in my adult life. So they, they tend to see, they get along better with the less of my uh, interference in their shit, the better off they do. <laughs> I hope so. I have them. I get all pissy. Just, I don't want to do the radio circ. I don't got nothing to say. And, you know, just it, it goes away and then you come back. It, you know, we're all a little out there. Or we wouldn't do this. This is an artistic kind of thing. You got to be an artsy kind of character to even want to sit and talk to yourself for two hours about absolutely nothing that matters to anybody but me. <laughs> no, I, can't, I don't fool myself into believing that. Just because I tell you guys what I think that you're going to go turn in your red hat and join the anarchy movement. Because I truly don't believe there's any movement to join. We just don't want to play in the real world the way the real world operates. And there's no option to get out of it. So we're basically held hostage against our will. you know, And... 
playing it, I don't even know how to describe what I do now. Um, I avoid it, I suppose, or it avoids me. I'm just, there's no attraction to me from this outside thing that's got everybody else's world you know tied up oh they're invading from the south into the california or whatever the border <laughs> what a crack of shit that is but well you will see i mean i think it's a bunch of shit but put a couple links on the internet and people will make anything hell they they shot somebody however many people shot 500 people in vegas a year ago and the fbi still got no idea how they did it but this guy pretended to make bombs and in three days managed to deliver them from one side of the United States to the other. And then they caught him in two days and boom, there he is. But shoot 500 people and the FBI is just confounded. They can't, what are we going to do? How are we going to ever figure this out? So it's always back to the more bullshit and uh, crap that you hear. The more the Fed's got to do with it, I suppose. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know what they're saying. Uh, let me read the chat. I will start with Grimnir. Flash, I think Art just had a bipolar moment. Oh, I read that already. Huh? He should have named his show, Are You Fucking Kidding Me? <laughs> oh, no. Wow. <clears throat> I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't agree with the man. I don't think that people should shoot each other over uh, political disagreements. And I don't think that people in groups of that size have made any decision. They're just a bunch of followers. And handing out the money kind of showed that. Whatever currency that could have been. I don't think they're in South America, Central America giving these people in lines American money. I think they were giving them the currency that they needed to survive where they were at the time to get to the next place. Or this is the most fucked up thing I've ever seen uh, explained to me through the internet so far. Because none of it's really making any sense. Then again, I, I argue about what everything. The money's fake. The medicine's fake. Wearing a seatbelt is... That should be a choice. You should be forced to do shit. See... That's the anarchist thing. Not, It's not so much, fuck the world, I'm going to run around and do whatever I want. It's more, why can't other people use their fucking common sense to make a decision about their own well-being? Why does it have to be intervened by government? Where, where did that invisible line get crossed? You know, Because it happened while I was growing up. So... By the time I was grown up, it was already there. And nobody really um, took the time to explain it to me as, as I was growing up, what I was facing. I had to figure all that out all by myself. And the funny thing about all this, I, I'm about, I would guess about Art, Art Underground's age by the comparison of the pictures. We look similar in years. And it strikes me that I would go to the one extreme of the circle, the circus, and he would go to the Republican extreme of the one-headed, you know, the two-sided coin. It's a two-headed coin, people. It's the ones that know it know it. I'm repetitive. Well, yeah, you try to be original with a political stand. It's not possible. You're just going to, every time you're going to repeat something you learned, heard, or saw. You can't be original in this political realm. And then the sad part is that the people that need to know the truth don't want to hear the truth at all. Oh, yeah, there you go. Too closely tied to religion. Well, when the Pope addressed Congress, I went through the ceiling here. I thought, hello, th this is government representation. And all of a sudden, you're mixing it with the, the Catholic Church. And I wanted to know why well if that would probably be because uh, it's it's all part of the same cake actually the catholics the jews the saudis the queen of england all those big mucky mucks i mean who else do they have to hang out with but each other i mean think about it you can only buy so many friends before somebody pays them to turn on you so these people 
got to live a pretty shallow, close-knit existence amongst their own. And that's, I don't know. If that's what worshiping them is for, I don't, I don't want any part of that. I don't even see, I don't really get what the big appeal is in the first place. I've been by palaces and mansions and all that horse shit. And no matter what, you can only physically use one room at a time. So mm, it's just a lot of waste and uh, exp- it's the waste and the uh, abuse of public to me. That's how I see it. You got people that you know, live on minimum wage, whatever the hell that is these days. And those are the people that support and worship Trump and the Queen of England and the government of Canada, Trudeau, and all this bullshit. All these all these fake fucking lying sacks of shit that <laughs> were supposed to represent us have somehow magically in the public eye become our leaders. And these people don't don't lead anywhere any they don't lead anybody anywhere that's worth going if you can think of anything that's been done as a result of government type it on the screen and we'll talk about it but i i can't see it i can't even imagine it at this point um where do you start with what do you start with to speak good about the a go, any government i can't well let's see what they're saying in the um yeah, he can wear a Hawaiian shirt and do the show drunk. That was frumpy. I don't know. Raging on an important issue is entertaining once. As a habit, it's belligerent. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't like being yelled at. That's my pet peeve of fucking peeves. I despise anybody raising their fucking voice or telling me what to do. I I don't know what the hell that... That's got to be, you know, uh, school and par- parents. And I don't remember my father ever asking me to do anything. He he said do it, and it was gonna get done. Or if he had refused, there was always a belt. So mm, questions never kind of. There was no questioning. So mm. and then school. School was. Do it, or we're going to send, you know, call your mom and dad and tell them how bad you are. And, you no, know, they sent me to the. I got an old story from school. This is, um, I was eight years, eight? I think it was eight or nine. I can't remember. This is 1968 or 1969. And I was getting um, bullied by this kid twice my size. His name was David Byer. Remember it to this minute. Anyway, so the. I was fighting back with him, and we both got in trouble because I didn't just ignore his crap, and I had to get into it with him. And we ended up in the principal's office, and you know, for fighting. And his punishment was a swat on the ass with the big this uh, about a two foot board, you know, they, psh, on the ass. That was that. Well, David's father came down to the school the very next day. And this back in the day when corporal punishment was legal. There was nothing illegal about the principal's behavior. But the father didn't like it, and his response was to come down to the school, grab the, the, I think his name was Stevens, grabbed the principal by the shirt, and raised him up the ground, and scared him so bad he had a stroke in the office. And that ended his uh, swatting the kids on the ass career. But it was, you know, that's where corporal, you know, where, that's where violence, corporal punishment or violence, that's where it sends people, you know. They lose their mind and they get, they overreact because somebody swatted a, a you know, a stout kid. This kid weighed a good 130 pounds at the time. He was a big boy. Anyway, but his father was bigger than him. And obviously, because, you know, he, he uh, tore up that poor principle but the lesson learned was uh to the through the state was no more corporal punishment to the children and if anything as we can see by looking as the years gone by the kids in school got real gutsy and nasty with teachers and other kids and things got a lot worse 
Now, I assume at this age in my life that I look back and see that corporal punishment is the, that's the society, you know, the government, the, the people that want to keep you in line and not take it too far, but show you if you're going to be a pain in the ass, there's a price to pay. Okay. I was okay with that. But everybody else seemed to be a bunch of pussies and say, well, everybody's going to get violent. And, well, people are going to get violent no matter how you behave. It doesn't fucking matter. It's in us. And and it's like the Rob was talking about the 100th monkey. We've got something similar to that in the stupidity department, I find. I call it the 150th monkey. And the minute you got 150 people collected in one place... There's always the one asshole, male or female, doesn't matter. There's always one that has to be above everybody there and causes trouble. And I don't find it so intrusive in smaller groups. You can get up and walk away. But at 150 people, there seems to be a, I don't know, they're like a catalyst that, that changes the atmosphere for me. And I'm not comfortable People, the negative side of it just oozes all over. And, eh, I want to just go away. Well, that same thing seems to attract other people. I read there's a Trump um, rally, I think San Antonio, San Antonio um, this week or something. And people were staying uh, overnight waiting. I, I, for the world, I wouldn't do that for anything or anybody. Sleep outside and wait to be in a group of 100,000 so I could watch a TV set of a game show host pitch me a service. And, nah, and I'm not on top of all that, I don't really want anything Trump's offering. He doesn't have anything I want. I would like to see is for the Americans to get their money out of Denmark. Then I, I'd give up. If the U.S. would back off this war on drugs, I'd quit the radio just to please, uh, what's his name, Sock Puppet, not be so repetitive. I'm just joking. I ain't quitting anything. Just wanted you to know I pay attention. I just don't give a fuck, you know, because you do what you do and I do what I do. And the illusion that it matters is that's the... See, that's what snapped art that snaps me, but I always manage to get back into reality and remember that the only one experience in this is me and the rest of you. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if you're there. I don't know if you're not there. You type something once in a while or if we're on the radio together, you might say something back, but certain <laughs> certain books about uh, physics and science say that what we're doing is all in our mind and then the wonder just the wonders of being alive you know your body does all that shit for you while you're sleeping you're not even awake you got cells reproducing hair growing fingernails growing all this stuff it really really small tiny little scales of measurement that you can't see with your eye right so i think once upon a time some guys got together and they said you know what i bet we could get them all to do anything that we wanted to want them to do and here we are all all these years later 2018 doing exactly what we're fucking told except for a few oh yeah grimner the um the war against drugs money is here that's huge that's not gonna ever stop i mean if it's i would like to see it stop i don't expect to see it stop although there's um more of an opportunity for it in this country than i've seen anywhere else except uh, portugal and where else portugal did it and Iceland is so small that they can they can deal with their bankers and put them in jail. So maybe they're they're not too bad. I wouldn't know personally from experience. But Portugal, I've read a little bit about that. They just decriminalized every fucking thing, and instead of arresting their junkies, they forced them into treatment physically. So yeah, I guess it's a prison, but it ain't a pirate chest. Cowboy Tech, how you doing? Um, but 
anyway, yeah, the, the American money is huge. Well, I, it's not. See, this is what I mean. I don't believe the money's real, but I'm not the one calling the shots. So the ones that are calling the shots, they've got everybody else convinced that the money is real. And all this stuff that they claim is real is real, and you either you go along with it or you don't. And right about there is where I usually lose my listener. They don't, because if you don't know what it means, then you don't. And it, it's not something that I'm trying to teach anyone. I uh, think uh, <laughs> yelling at me. <laughs> I just looked up at the screen and saw Beetle. I'm yelling at Flash. <laughs> and then Kate, he'll see it in 30 seconds because of the timing. And then plus I'm slower than Mary. <laughs> anyway. No, I, I got a good sense of humor for, you know, garbage talk. Uh it's like the the thing between me and Hans is, is more, uh, what would I call that? He's more insulting to people than anybody I've encountered so far. But he, <laughs> the other night, <laughs> he was on a rant about, you know, the pussies that live in Scotland. And, you know, they're just a bunch of um, second best to the women. And Jay's Nines and Jay's is, actually lives there. And he was on the site that night reading this stuff. And I'm sitting back, and I'm reading what he's writing, and he's asking him, are, are you pointing this at me? And Hans is just typing away, just oblivious to the rest of us, like usual. And I tried to explain to Jay's that, no, that was just Hansel running his mouth. But I forgot that Hansel is Jay Dredd now. So if you don't know that, you wouldn't. it wouldn't make sense. So then, anyway, so then I decided to jump in. I got all nasty with Hansel. And <laughs> and then the next day, uh, I took the day to just didn't want to even bother with the um, chat for a day. And I come back Friday to this art extravaganza. And I thought, well, what the fuck? People are, because of what happened with me Wednesday night, this is my ego. This is how we all are, right? Because I thought, oh, man, I must have started shit and got people mad again. And it had nothing to do with me for once. So, hmm. But, you know, I'm used to being involved in the middle of everybody's shit because I speak out loud, you know. Not because I give a fuck or I care. Just participation. <laughs> Every once in a while, I, I, I'll uh, just get into a mood to chat and I'll type a bunch of shit for no apparent reason doesn't mean anything just having fun and then I'll go play my video game for an hour <laughs> there's there's no rhyme or reason to my participation doesn't mean anything to me but if it means something to you hmm, maybe your your wires are a little too tight you need to loosen them <laughs> relax some uh, let's see what is going on in the RLM chat. We got a talkative little group today. And what we got going on? Grimner said about the money, and it's uh, not in a pirate chest. It's the drug money. I was talking about the drug money that goes through because of the war on drugs. And wow, it's just very powerful to, to businesses. And not only that, but America has still got a good reputation in some areas of life and a lot of Danes will visit America they have a very forgiving nature these people because when I first got here uh, I was 2014 and there was a, a Danish kid that got framed for some kind of child abuse crap and you know how the states can be about that shit and they had some poor kid locked up in you know in America, and he didn't do anything. And it's prove you didn't. <laughs> Not here. We've got proof that you did it. What they do is we're accusing you of this. Now prove to us that you didn't do anything. <laughs> anyway, so that was, uh, and that is another reason that Cirque is so mm, apprehensive about visiting my homeland, because. I think she sees that our government, politics, and police, and all that's all gone insane. And when they were going insane over here, the people revolted and said, Hey, we don't like the way the police are treating us. Tell these people to calm down. And I would assume from here, being here so long, it would have been more in the less, it would be outside of the big 
Copenhagen. I mean, Copenhagen probably participated, but I saw a video of cops on the street randomly giving people hugs because they didn't want them to be intimidated by their presence. And I, I don't know whether to shit or go blind when I was watching the, watching the links, but yeah, because if a cop came towards me trying to give me a hug, Danish or not, I'm going to shit my pants and think I'm going to prison because that's what cops do. That's what I've always seen them do. And the few times that I've had to interact with the police, that was in Scotland and England. In Scotland and England, when I was there, those police still dealt with you in a civil manner. You know, that was just the way, because on the island, everybody knew them. So if you, you know, start screwing around with people on an island, you end up off the island somewhere. <laughs> you won't stay long. And it was just more bearable. Anyway, so I get over here and I'm expecting the worst. You know, I've never had it. I used to go to Freetown about, I don't know, once a week. Go down there, take my walk and enjoy. It was like a about an hour. So it's about three miles from um, the apartment to uh, Freetown, go out there and sit down, smoke a spliff and have a beer, enjoy the morning and turn around and walk home. And that was like, um, yeah, I really enjoy that. Sometimes I break down and take a bus, but only uh, if it was cold, <laughs> if it was warm, I'd walk. And, and not only that, but the, uh, the, the scenery was always, it's, it was new to me. I, I did it for eight months, but it was every time I went, it was like seeing it for the first time. I've never been able to, uh, hey, Donna, how you doing? I'm waiting for Rob Works to get back. He uh, offered to do some time with me here and help me out on my dork table program, but he either got booted or something came up, and uh, I lost him. Uh, do not want your hug copper what dork cakes is going crazy about copper yeah copper do not touch me don't want your hug thanks i don't know who copper is but i hope that hope that it oh the police <laughs> i get it now. see how slow i can be i need hey let me let me do that again i'm i'm still making sense anyway yeah exactly cakes and but here where i'm at if I hadn't been told by Cirque, I wouldn't believe it. I would have. I would still be sitting here waiting for the shoe. You know, the other shoe to drop. And whatever I've seen of the police, nah, I'm an old guy now. They they don't. You know, I'm not doing anything to anyone. But when I was young, the look was all you needed. If you had the hair or you dressed, you know, different than people that had nine to five jobs then the police thought you needed to be talked to for a few minutes to see what kind of crap they could find on you. And not stop John Smith because he did this, but stop that guy and see what we can find. Now, according to the, the law that I grew up with, that's not how it worked. But According to the law that we live under today, that's exactly how it works. And I blame the voters for it. I, I never voted for any of this shit. I never wanted any of this shit. I have tried to stay away from society on paper for a good 30 years, I would say. The first few years of my adulthood, I was still naive and didn't know anything. But by 27, I think I'd figured, I figured out what I needed to know by then. And for the last 30 years, I've been dropping friends and family like it was a contest. The deeper I get into my life, the further away the relatives went. <laughs> uh, let's see what's going on in the chat. I was talking about the cops giving you a hug. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, sit right across from the police station. They don't even have one here. I've mentioned that a few t dozen times. But, wow, the lack of uh, police presence in my life doesn't bother. I'm not afraid of these Danes. I don't think I'd be, a be afraid if I was any. 
you, you carry yourself wherever you go. So whatever your intentions are is what you're going to get. And just being young in the States when I was there in the years I'm talking about was all the reason they needed. They didn't need to have a reason to bother you. You just had to be in their way or fit their, you know, their script, whatever they're looking for at the time. And that's, that's law enforcement. Law enforcement is not necessary. Well, it may be to some people, but uh, not me. I mean, what are you going to get out of it? Art wants to build a wall and then have some guy sit on that wall with a gun and shoot people on the other side of the wall. And I don't... Hmm. See, it's all this imaginary government. All these rich people that claim that they own everything, they put us in these little little containment boxes they call countries. <laughs> then they dictate your actions, you know, financially, physically. You got to wear clothes. Uh, what other crap do they tell you you got to do? You can't run around in public naked because, you know, um, the naked body is a perversion and it brings the worst out of people. Well, see, because we're raised to believe all this horse shit through their freaking religion in their school because i'll tell you one thing uh if i want to run around my yard buck naked wave my little wiener out there that's my business and nobody seems to care when i do it if i do it i might be bluffing i might not go out there and actually do it but at least i know i can <laughs> oh uh, huh honey <laughs> Hey, I thought Rob was going to come here and <laughs> my wife is going to support my naked time in the backyard. Um, mm, Beatles talking about naked women's. Yeah, but see, that's the whole point. You know, we're we're so uh, misdirected by society. You know, the society that runs what people are taught is whatever they're taught it is because you can take the same idea and teach it to 10 different people and you got 10 different things so it's all how you direct what you're teaching to the learner i suppose uh mr cakes is getting uh typey on this rlm chat it's good to see you pop in and be a little sociable anyway. I missed you while you were gone because uh, me and Mary, were we stopped doing the show together back in, uh, I think it was June we did our last together show. And she took some time to go, you know, get into the farming and, you know, do other things, visit her, her family and, and be a, you know, be a freed slave from her job and, do other things, so eh, I got over it. And then, but she came back and did it, did a show with me about a week ago or so, a week or two back. I think it was last week. So I got over that. But now I'm just waiting for the winter time to come and make her sit inside so I can kidnap her again. I was telling Cirque, I'm even thinking of staying up Wednesday night and giving her a surprise call on Halloween and just torture her on her own program and see how she likes it. <laughs> we don't know what we're going to do from one day to next. Anyway, so we got a weather report going on for those of you out there in reallibertymedia.com chat. The weather in Lebanon, Oregon, is mostly cloudy. <laughs> ah, this is too much. Well, I don't know. I didn't really... Uh, have a plan and then when rob said he was going to come on then i i had rearranged my whole thinking process and i now nah, i didn't make notes see I, me and him were going to kick around the uh, the events of the week you know from our sides of it because me and rob see this pretty much the same way the anarchist mind state okay because i don't know people are all in love with their but you do this, and but you do that. Yeah, well, the difference between some of us and others is you can do things and 
know that's a bunch of bullshit while you do it. And still do it. But other people that do it, for some reason, they're, they're really accomplishing something. You know, their vote matters. <laughs> oh, Kex is putting up pictures of good-looking women on the RLM chat, people. Beatles all over it, and he wants to know, is she a porn star? <laughs> wow, what a way to live. Ha, I made $28 in porn last year. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they make good money. I think it's a bunch of shit. But, you know, uh, now they're debating. They're be debating her porn status on the RLM chat. You guys, come on, man. So, I don't know. I, I go. Let's go with the, um, the invasion from the South from my perspective of it. And it just floors me that a threat of that nature... And, you know, if it's carried by the right the right sites and the right MSM, I'm sure it's going to get a fallen. You could write anything on there. As long as you word it correctly and it's carried by the right people, then it's true to this, you know, certain wavelength or something that these people think on. Because whatever they're doing, however this works, I, I don't feel anything from it except, God, I wish it would go away. <laughs> it's it's beyond the pale it's horrible i've still yet to see anybody write anything on here that says oh the fed is good i love the fed please give me more fed i haven't had enough fed today and i guess it's all summed up by this one little idea right and it goes like this if if you've bought your home and you spent 30 years paying that home and it's your home why are you paying property tax on that home if it's your home and boy that that comment right there is w enough to break a marriage okay people get upset seriously and fight physically over that one i know and uh the reality is too much for certain um certain people and their their indoctrinations to consume you know, they can handle hearing it they just don't want to hear it again ever <laughs> but they don't want to address the problem that they don't believe they have either so we're we're what do you what would you call this this is like a we're not at a stalemate because the game is still going on but there's there's nobody's gaining any ground on either side of whatever there's only two sides to be on apparently there's the winning side and the, the losing side and if you don't choose one then where wow i don't know how to explain that because i know what i'm thinking but i don't think it translates very well because the game is going to go on with or without me after i'm gone it's still going to be there so whether i participate in it at this level of finance or not is incidental it only matters in a cluster like uh, the way they do our birth certificates you know i have read the most interesting tales of the birth certificate and seen many links telling me break it down and, hey this is what it is and this is what it does and this is who it s supports and this is how it helps them now i've yet to get a copy of my own but they say the original of your birth certificate is got the bank stamped on the back of it that you're financing. But I don't know how to get a copy of it. How do we end taxes? Uh, you can't. People are brainwashed into believing this story, this crap. You can't do that either, Grim. There's no way to end these governments. There's too many helpless weasels out there that, well, not only the helpless weasels, but you got the you got the armchair quarterback that wants to sit and dictate who goes out and fires uh, loaded weapons at other people. You know, they're not getting their hands dirty, but they've got some seat of 
of power what do you call it seat of influence or something and magically these dumb kids get themselves in a financial mess with the fed and to support themselves they got to go to some foreign place and go shoot people yeah well i don't know it that part of it didn't interest me but I don't. I don't think you. I don't really think you can get in if you give them any. Uh, I gave them grief. They. I said, Nah, I ain't killing anyone. Well, we're not interested in you. They said back. <laughs> so here we are, all these years later, and geez, I think the the U.S. military is occupying a hundred and seventy countries to to the day, maybe one seventy five. Nobody's really sure. It, there, it's so unaccountable. And how do you prove any of this shit anyway? Unless you get up off your duff and go to every place that... <laughs> so you got to trust people on the internet that they're not lying to you. Mm. Uh, see, the, the, it, the individual knows better than the group. Is my, that's my thing. I, don't think, I think the group is fucked up. No matter what the group wants... It's always got some prick in that group that wants to lead everybody to salvation. Follow me. I know where I'm going. And me, I have no fucking idea where I'm going. Don't care where I'm going. Don't live in that fucking fantasy illusion of mine. Give me more. Oh, I don't have enough. (laughs) But I did. And I enjoyed it when I was young. But now I'm old, and good God, I mean, how many years does somebody physically and mentally want to put their self through all that wasted fucking time to to get nothing? Because wherever I'm at now, and whatever I have or don't have only matters today. Oh, they're still on the porn star on the on the RLM chat. <laughs> dork, dork and Beetle. <laughs> They're going crazy. Uh, Kate's probably had to take out the dogs. Kate's a big dog lover. I wonder if Moose got herself uh, another um, dog to see. She took a look at the first dog that I re- a couple of weeks ago. and uh, I haven't listened to the Freaker's Ball yet, so I don't know if they talked about it last night. So maybe she did, and I'll have to wait until tomorrow or Monday to find out. But I've put the good vibrations out there so that some lucky dog can find Miss Moose because that's how that works. If you if you believe, if you don't believe, then it doesn't. That's how things work in life. You have to believe that it's going to work or it won't. And if it does, you won't see what it did because you said, ah, it ain't going to work. So it doesn't. Hmm. I remember talking to a a guy once about, you know, it's not me that you have to listen to. It's yourself. It's whatever, whatever I bring out of you is what you need to know. Not what I put into you. That's just me talking. You know, this is what I did or this is how it went for me. Um, I don't. No, I ain't going to do that to nobody. I ain't. I ain't. uh, Vinny does that. Mary does that. But, nah, I'm going to stay with the funny voices and stuff, you know. Or, hey, maybe I could get one of my voices to come in and be my guest. <laughs> yeah, we'll have the schizophrenic dork table. <laughs> I'm schizophrenic and so am I. Yeah. I don't know. What I do know is that I don't know shit. I think a lot of stuff, you know. I've got a lot of fucking ideas, but... When I sit down, I I don't find that the things that I believe or think or whatever this is, I don't think they're provable. You either you go with it or you don't. And whatever information that you have, it's tainted by poor fuel intake. So, you know, between the indoctrination, the shitty fuels, the shitty wavelengths it's all delivered on, the crap that I'm getting isn't worth paying attention to for the most part in the first place. That is the point I've been trying to make for a lot of years without knowing how to put words to it for it to be understood. But the 
the foundation's been there for a long time. I've always been displeased with society, even when I was in it. But you take, you know, you take the good with the bad in life, I suppose. Ah, uh, they're still putting up pictures of babes and such. Or wait a minute, no, no, we got a Pittsburgh's got a shooter named on police scanner. Blah blah blah. That was Echelon posting that one. I'm not opening any links to read or nothing, but I don't know. Rob kind of screwed me up with the promise of a of a partner, and then uh, something changed his mind, and he left me here all like my my partner Vinny. <laughs> Vinny did this to me too, <laughs> and it's no big deal. I'm sh shit. I'm sure people got lives. It's a Saturday, but it's still funny as hell. You know, when you think about it in the long run. So this is my uh, opportunity to tell people what I think. You know, that's what the dork table's for. You're not to repeat and regurgitate what other people told me I should think. And if I did that, I could sit in a position of fucking power. Join a church, become a religious fanatic leader and, you know, do all that good work for the church and make all that money that comes along with it. But I cross the line with poking little kids. <laughs> I don't, I don't find little kids sexually attractive enough to join a church. <laughs> well, at least not the Catholic church. Now the Jew church, the synagogue, I don't know. That's a smaller thing. So there's probably a lot of inbred shit going on in there. I, 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 then I'm too Jewish to join the Muslims. They probably take me, though, as like a token muzzy. You see that? Could you see me with my beard down to my nuts, you know, yelling Allah Akbar? <laughs> I, I don't think so. Well, who else we got? We got the Mormons. They're pretty big. They only want 10%. That's not too much. I think, hey, 10% and I get to join your cult? And then I can have how many wives? Uh, do you got to be like born in Utah to have like eight wives? Or <laughs> My wife wouldn't go along with it anyway. She's sitting over there knitting, trying to figure out what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Then I apologize, Rob. I was giving you a hard time figuring something more important came up. But yeah, if his internet dropped, that there's something more important coming up. But, ah, did it sound like I was really being uh, a prick to Rob Works? Uh, I did enjoy Tuesday. And once me and Rob get a, a better rapport, a little more experience talking to each other, because uh, I won't be doing a Mary or a Vinny thing with him. I'm going to be trying to do a more serious, less fucking around, you know, and you know, just try to make sense out of uh, the world that we're in. Because the one we're in is not what the one we're told about is. We're lied to. Hey, here we go. This is the part where I usually see the eyes roll. Because I really believe everything that I've ever been taught, no matter how truthful it, it was, the foundation of it was a lie because of all the all the components that go into to learning something. You know, like... It would compare to your engine. I mean, if you put shitty gas in your car, you're going to have a shitty ride. But if you put the good gas and you take care of your car and you check, you know, you, you check your fuel fluids regularly and you do normal maintenance and you keep your tires balanced, all that, you know, the happy ass horse shit that goes into having a decent car, then you, you would have a car that ran really good. Well, the same goes for us. And we don't have the luxury of having the, the good electricity to use as a foundation. So here we are. Mm. Which makes me think about art again. You know, because part of me wants him to uh, reconsider his, con his, uh, his decision and, you know, do this again. Because I think it's a necessary, it's necessary for both sides of the coin to be heard and understood. Not... You know, not just my side. I've invited Hansel on here to to banter his statist point of view and, you know, explain to me just exactly why he's so much better than a man he doesn't know or why he's so much better than somebody that doesn't have an education because I don't value any of that shit. It doesn't mean anything to me. 
But he won't come on here and talk about it. Oh. Oh. But he'll type good. He'll type a good game. Let's see what goes. What's going on? Ah, it's all settled down. Nothing's going on in the world. Maybe I ought to resort to telling a joke. See if I got a new... Oh, I'm trying to remember. I got a little Johnny Foulmouth joke. I hope I can tell this one right. Um, <clears throat> we was in school back in the day, and we had a classmate, and the teacher sweetly called him Little Johnny Foulmouth because whenever Johnny could speak, he always had a foul mouth. He would always say something inappropriate. Well... The teacher, in her wisdom, decided to try something new and approach the class with different flavors of, uh, like, jellies and jams and sweets on these cookies. And we were all supposed to pick one up and taste it. And Johnny, um, was he was the last in line always, always last to be called. So the teacher felt pretty comfortable about it this particular day. And she gives a cracker, and the first kid, oh, that's that's jam on my cracker. And they go, and there are five kids down the thing. The cracker has honey on it, and the kid didn't know what it was. Uh, teacher, I, I don't know what this is. And then the teacher gives the little girl a clue. She says, well, that's what's on your cracker is something that your mom would call your dad before he goes to work in the morning and johnny little johnny jumps up on the desk and he screams don't eat it it's an asshole anyway <laughs> it was honey <laughs> i told you if i told that it's a hard joke to tell properly anyway but well, Rob got booted off the internet, so I had to do a solo show un, uh, unprepared. And my mind is on the marijuana, so we're bouncing from topic to topic and door to door. Flash ah uh -uh dog advert. P&G UK and Ireland. The pug <laughs> selling the uh, selling yeah. Oh, Procter and Gamble. Oh, there's another evil Procter and Gamble. Good God. You know, and all these rich people that all these poor people worship are... Whew, wow. I, I wonder if, if they could understand the truth if they saw the truth. And, and then, again, the truth. What is that? Hmm. Well, I don't know how to define it anymore. I think that everything's bullshit. So, kind of gives me an easy way out. Then I don't have to spend a lot of time defining anything. But, hey, look at all the fun stuff we got to work with here. We've got an invasion from the south. We've got midterm elections coming up. Denmark is really boring compared to you guys. I'm telling you, you got nothing going on over here. I'd have to go set somebody on fire to get anybody to notice me in this town because it's just quiet. And blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I was looking over my notes, stalling for some topic that I haven't that I haven't done alone on the Dork Table podcast. <clears throat> or maybe I'll just get Wimpy to get me a hamburger. Oh, good, 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 good. Or maybe not. Let's see. Uh -huh. Hey, you know what we could do? Let's let's make some money lying. You know? We got any lawyers out here in the in the RLM chat? Anybody want to get a law degree and become a liar? No? Wow, you people are you yeah, tough crowd, tough crowd. I'm telling you, uh, I get no respect, no respect at all. Yeah, well, anyway, I think I asked this question. I'm going to try this one again because I haven't burned it out yet. But back in the day, I'm, I was reading a, a couple of days ago, but back in the day when they were making uh, pot illegal, okay, what their stand was is pot at the time According to the politicians, they were presenting it to be worse than heroin. That opiates would ultimately lead you to using pot, the evil devil's lettuce. And <laughs> what's his name? Asl and Slinger. I think Grimner knows this guy's name. Anyway, it was back in the 30s. And he got in front of the court or the Congress under oath 
which is all important to these asshats because it, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter if it's true or not. It matters that you put it on the record, and the record is considered to be the truth, no matter what the fuck the record says. And this man, <laughs> he said he smoked a marijuana cigarette, and he turned into a bat. And based on that crock of shit that I just said, marijuana was the most dangerous schedule one narcotic known to mankind because that's what's on the record see that's what matters it doesn't matter that hey people been using it for five thousand years to make everything you know but no when i smoked it it turned me into a bat (laughs) okay so now here we are all these years later and they turned it around and now weed is it's a gateway drug to heroin. Oh, no it's not. <laughs> if if you've ever if you've ever enjoyed an armload of heroin, the last thing in the world that you're ever going to do is look for any weed. And if you're doing an armload of heroin, it is more than likely to even say this, weed had nothing to do with it. <laughs> People that smoke pot are, like me, boring, and uh, we're uneventful. We're just little hobbits that, you know, watch TV and eat cookie dough, you know, and make art. Just simple, unimportant shit like that. You know, we're we're not, the, the people that are out there causing all the trouble, actually, they're the ones that are on the prescription medication. <laughs> do a little reading about some of that and slinger yeah oh <laughs> yeah but it's it is pronounced ass slicker but you've read that too right grimner i'm not just making up a story for the dork table <laughs> but if you heard it and you didn't know it was a reference to uh, american history wouldn't you think that's just some clown on saturday jacking around with us on the rlm it w- wouldn't hold any weight but actually there's there is physical proof that, that these things took place and i'm still a little upset that the answer is in stop the prohibition i've been i've been sucked into the game too uh and i learned legalized uh, that's just more control so i know hey wait a minute that doesn't work okay legalizing it just so that the government can decide how much i have and how much i don't it's still punishable then it's eh. then who needs that so why not just stop all the all the attention on it just turn your back it's it's something you want it you go get it now if you break laws from that point on they should be laws that have something to do with law like growing a thousand acres of the shit or whatever have you but if a guy wants to have two ounces or ten ounces in his of personal in his own house why why does the government have anything to say about it at all and what they do have to say is all bad but all the medical references and all the benefits of the cannabis and hemp all show you that it's all a bunch of crap Oh, how can we claim others cause all the trouble? Because we're not causing trouble. That's how. If you were out causing trouble, <coughs> excuse me, you wouldn't be here chatting on a damn um, r- chat room. You'd be out there causing trouble. And the ones that cause the trouble are the people that you that you seem to want to cause all the trouble they cause. I mean, it takes a lot of nut to make up a story like that. I smoked a marijuana cigarette and turned into a bat. He never told him how he stopped being a bat. (laughs) What was the antidote? No, no, no. What? What? You know, when somebody lies, they're not accountable for the lie they tell. Never. Not me, not you, not a politician, not a religious fanatic, not a school teacher, because once the the deed is done way before you can punish anybody and the punishment of a lie is believing the lie not any all that legal shit later doesn't fucking matter that's revenge what 
But the voter is the victim of a lie and unwilling, unable, incapable of grasping that simple concept that people are lying to me? No. Well, of course they are. How else would you be living in the life that we live in? If it was true, the things, the negative shit we see wouldn't exist. That's, well, that's probably a physics kind of thing, but, um, well, I've I've read that whatever reality I see is the reality I make. And I've grown to agree with that. And I find my reality is more comfortable with a lot less people in it. And beyond people in it, the less people that I engage uh, in conversation, beyond commerce, but conversation, the less people I encounter in conversation, that just makes things that much better for the most part. Uh, I've got my own reality to live and my own life. So I'm not out in the world gathering a collection of people in the first place. You know, I'm not out there trying to do anything besides get through my living day and do what's necessary according to the guidelines of the society that we participate in and not hurt anyone. But Words are another story. Words seem to cross that invisible threshold. You can really rock somebody else with words. And I think the keeping it keeping it temporary is a personal thing. You can learn how to do that. Like I've had my moments with Hans, but eh, I can ignore Hans and he's gone. So whenever I get bored of no Hans, I just unignore Hans and boom there he is and every time he's always insulting somebody I hadn't seen him insult before so it's it's good <laughs> I, I don't I don't know what I'd do without him but um, I think Jay's thought he was a bot he says I think you're a, if this is a bot I'm just going to ignore this <laughs> so <laughs> I don't think I've ever been ignored because anybody thought I was a bot <laughs> I've been ignored because people thought I was mean. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. Or because they think I'm rude. They don't like my demeanor. Or that I say the word fuck a lot. But, uh, eh, whatever. It's just a word. And, it, like, it's... It, okay, Grim sitting over there in New Mexico. I'll use Grim as an example of this because he doesn't get all nasty and upset because they talk about him. Um, so you're over there in New Mexico sitting in your in your house and I'm over here in Denmark and I'm in my house and I see the words you chat on the screen and you see the words I chat okay we all understand all that fucking shit but what we all don't understand is the dynamics of how it works and the shit that it does to your brain for you to see it <laughs> we just turn on a machine and boom there it is end of it uh, I'm done okay let's read now, my mind is a little different than some people, and I explore questions, not necessarily for the answer, sometimes just for the entertainment of just hearing what other people will say, because I don't think anybody really knows. They've read something, they've heard something, they saw a link, just like me, but know it? Nah, we've got opinions, and we have uh, beliefs, well, Mary likes to play with that one, but uh, I don't think we know anything. I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to go with it. So the point with Grimm is whatever I type on the screen, if I told you to go fuck yourself and blah, 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 it's how you take it that matters, not what I write. I could write anything on there, actually. And no matter what I write, how you take it is your business. And you got 30, what do we got? 31 today in here. So that's 30 and bots, but that's that many different people reading the same thing, but yet coming out of it with a different, um, a different personal response to it. But I think we've been groomed into this group thing where you join sides and you want to be, you want to be with the people that know what's going on and all this horse shit. And I found it a lot easier to just admit, I don't know what's going on. I just know I don't like it. And what I've decided to do is just make my prison as comfortable as can. And me and my partner get along for the most part. Even the dogs over there, she's laying on her back with her feet up. 
because uh, I'm sitting here talking all crazy whatnot, but my tone isn't enough to rattle my dog and make her crazy and, you know, anxious. But that's what the dog would would uh, react to. Wouldn't be the the words so much as the way the words come across. And it, in her physical behavior, to me, lets me know that, hey, I may not be correct, but I'm not threatening anyone. You know, I don't want to dictate what Grimm does in New Mexico. And I think that by Grimm telling me over the years and proven by by his uh, his word and deed that he doesn't expect other people to do what he says. He's not telling anyone anybody how to behave. Uh, I find that quite refreshing in a lot of ways. Oh, now they're writing in the Latin. Uh, the Mexican language on the thing. Uh-oh. I can't read Espanol Grimnard. But, you see, that's the point is some people just get too carried away with thinking that what they're reading matters. I do it every every day. Something will rock me. But I try to come back to earth and remember it's just what I'm reading on a screen. Big fucking deal. It doesn't. It's not going to change the way my wife cooks dinner. I'll tell you that. Or, uh, it's not going to change the amount of cigarettes I have left in the pack on the table. So what difference does it fucking make? It's all in my mind. And then I took this whole thing a step further and started reading a little bit more about it. And the more I read about it, the more convinced I am that this life experiencing thing that I'm doing is whatever I want it to be. I could, I can make anything out of this. So... I've decided comfort was, that was a good place. You know, hey, let's be comfortable and be around people that are not so dramatic. My American friends towards the last five years of living in the States were a little dramatic. A lot of um, legal problems and uh, people not getting along over stupid, um, why do you put it, putting their hands on each other, just being uh, inconsiderate. And then being somebody got into some money and then, well, now I'm going to sue you for what you did that I pushed you into doing. And that mentality, that greed bone takes over. <laughs> it's It was horrible to watch it, but hmm. I think the way I interpret other people's experiences also gives me something to judge my own shit on, you know. I can look at somebody else in the grocery store and, and see them disagreeing about something. And I don't have to speak the language to read a face. And it doesn't happen very often, but it's it's very uncomfortable to see a couple in public that aren't getting along for whatever reason. You know, it's not it's not a good thing to see. But it's not my business either. It's just something that for whatever See, I don't know how to identify this stuff to where it goes back to, but I suppose I had to see that for some reason and to justify something that I believe. So then I go out in the world and it, there it is. You make your reality. It comes to you because you're looking for it. And it's there. Whatever you want is there. You just got to walk the right way and you'll trip into it. I don't think a lot of people believe that. You know, they call it trial and error or something. I just think it's uh, make up your mind and go fucking do it. There ain't nothing in the world worth doing that you can't do if you give it a try. You might fail by society's standards, but hey, my first painting was not was not great, but it was you know it was a start, and I didn't depend on other people to tell me well you've got potential here i looked at it and went well i could do a little better if i tried so the next thing i did was even more bizarre what i did was i drew it out on a piece of lumber and then it took a jigsaw and i cut it out it was about three foot tall and then after that i painted it and i took it to the school and showed them what i did and uh they weren't they weren't very impressed they didn't seem to didn't do anything for them but i i liked it so you know i learned very young to not put my expectation of result how you're going to react to my great artwork nah, i don't give a fuck how you react to my great artwork anymore 
I just do what I do. And it took a lot of years to get to the point I'm at. And I don't know how long I've been there. I might have been this way a lot longer than I'm aware of because I'm looking out of the eyes and other people are looking at me. So mostly the only judgment that I suffer in life is from the wife and uh, a few folks on on a chat room in a few different places. And that's it. But that response doesn't... Um, define me it's just showing me what i'm projecting to them and to each person it's going to be different so so that i guess what i'm getting to in this in this little diatribe is that's where the the trump lover thing just it loses me because if that many people want it we've got thousands of years of history to show that the more uh the people want it the worse it is for you Oh, depart now. I am still talking. Oh, you just have to turn on the radio. It's okay. But he is kind of disappointing sometimes. A little, little pain in the butt. Anyway. Yeah. Well, who, you know, all Dutch PM warns Canadians against sparking up. Wow. See, you know, it's all about money, man. I'm a cowboy. It's... This has got nothing to do with us. It's got nothing to do with um, what's good for human life. or It's all about the, the, the finances, what they're going to get back from allowing us to do something. What the f- you, That's what a slave is. We're being allowed to do what nature made free. I mean, now, but politics trumps nature. How... For our own fucking good, on top, these people are just, they're insane. I don't trust them, I don't like them. I'm kind of hoping this invasion thing is real. And just for fi- to, to finally come to, um, push come to shove with all this political crap and something actually happen on your soil, America's soil for once. Because America's been invading everybody else for God, 200 years plus. And... You know, if there's any truth to that karma shit, well, then it's your turn in the barrel, America. But I don't think everybody, all the people, see, it's not the people that this is coming to. It's the government. (laughs) People are just pawns. Nobody gives a shit about the people. I've never seen anybody in a political situation do anything that was good for anybody in anything but a financial way. And that's not good. It's been proven time after fucking time after fucking time. And here we are all these years later. The Rothschilds got $67,000 trillion. Uh, well, how many Rothschilds do you know? I I don't think I've ever seen a Rothschild. But I would venture to guess this. That when you buy Coca-Cola... And you buy shit like what? Uh, Snickers bars and McDonald's and all those cheap little uh, addictions that they set for us out there. You know, every dollar we spend on that shit fuels their machine. And the more fuel it gets, the more fuel it wants. It doesn't operate any better, it doesn't help anyone. Like Kate started in the beginning of the show. Three men have more wealth than 50% of the population of the United States. Okay. That's 150 million people, right? But these three guys are so special to the 150 million that they give them all their fucking money as a collective. Oh, here you go, Mr. Soros. How much do you want? I will give you all. Oh, please take it from me. <laughs> Uh, look what the medical system did. Wow. There's half your slavery right there. Beyond politics. Is you got this FDA bullshit conning people into believing that. They can go into a laboratory and make a synthetic and inject it into your bloodstream and not kill you or maim you. Well, but all the, all the, uh, all the proof tends to lead me to believe quite the opposite that chances are really good 
that if you do this, that you're going to end up crippled or fucking dead. And the numbers prove it, but it doesn't stop. Now, how come? What? How many million people live here that would argue with me about that, too? And all the all the medical shit's all been proven. It, there's links up the fucking ass. Doctors have come forward and risked their fucking life and moved to foreign cont- countries to continue to be alive because they probably got a bounty on their head in the States for going against the medical profession and telling the truth. Because all the stuff that we're doing now is all... It's, it's bad. <laughs> I don't think there's even a word for whatever it is. But the results, look around. The results are obvious. I don't think I've seen a kid that didn't have a cell phone in maybe a couple of weeks. It's starting to irritate me. How connected everybody, even here, they got to be connected. I mean, I don't know the, if if the allure to them is the protection like i guess oh you keep your phone handy so if you caught to call the police uh, or some bullshit like that you know hey you want to make things worse hit 911 <laughs> we might all be dead but hell it'll be a hell of a party <laughs> oh yeah see cowboy cowboy knows his history oh um, because I, I i like to pick on hansel but i also like to put in a good word for somebody that you know, carries a good message and doesn't argue and doesn't harass anyone. And son, the, the other, remember the other day, cowboy, me and you were, uh, we were dealing with some guy, apostle, some something, and wow, he just had it in for me, Cirque, you. He was calling you names. I don't think you you ever um, you never broke your code. You kept your 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 manner was still the same. You know, you kept your cool through that. I didn't. I was calling him everything but a white boy. <laughs> I like to I like to spar on the internet. But I like I've said, you know, I'd like to give it up someday when I grow up. <laughs> if I ever become an adult and quit being childish and but I probably won't. Maybe that's you know, staying young is uh it's not a physical thing. It's a mental you know, if your mind is right and you don't let your um, you don't let your ways take a hold of you and run you. You know, how do you explain that? I guess I guess at this point in life, I've got a I've got enough years behind me to to put my my expression of it out there and be understood by a few people. That's that's what cowboy text for. Cowboy gets me, and Miss Kate. Um, I know that. And sometimes Kate, she plays, you know, she gets sarcastic and thinks I don't know it. <laughs> and the the sad part about it is that I was kind of expect it, you know. It's like, why would you um, have have a target like me that you could fuck with and not not fuck with it once in a while? You know, that's just that's just the way it goes. The, the deal with my where the opposition is, he's so nasty and rude to people, and never accountable never gives a shit about what anybody else thinks always right oh now uh k grimner oh oh that i don't and see grim i i don't even care i the first time he did it i was saying hey that's nice sweetheart and trying to blow it off and the second time it um, <laughs> but poor hansel well you know this is how society operates is you've always got your gossip mongers they're too afraid to get onto you know to get onto a soapbox and stand in the middle of the park and yell so they go whisper shit in people's ears behind everybody's back (laughs) and know all about you i was married to somebody like you once she's gone now she's been dead a few years but uh boy she was one way to me and then behind my back she was not so nice about me and eh, people turn, you know, they uh, they uh, don't live up to their promises, but they tell you they are. And that's what life is supposed to teach you how to do is to to tell the, the truth from the false. And there was a time it was easier to fool me and now not so much, you know, because I know so much about the real physical world around me. 
And it made my understanding my personal life a whole lot easier. Because, uh, I don't know. Things go wrong and uh, people don't stay loyal to you when the ship's going down. <laughs> the, a lot of the time, I think Cirque is. But I, the last wife I had, she was not so... Uh, she was not so loyal to me about uh, the belief system thing. She was a very stout Republican. And when I started to see the things I was seeing and went against the system, she sided with the system and I lost. Mm. Mm. Oh, I appreciate you telling me, Grimner. And it just goes to show that I'm not making up shit about Hansel on the radio. He's He really is everything I say and, and so much more. You know, but yeah. And then Cowboy Tech says, if someone can be led by Hansel, must be a dog tag type. Yeah, well, yeah, but not wanting to be involved in that and then not taking advantage of it when it happens are two different things. Because some part of me still likes to, you know, fuck with the... The weirdos. I don't know what to call it. Because <clears throat> to them, I'm the weirdo. I want them to stay out of my life. You know, Don't intrude in my life with your badges and your guns and your politics and your fucking religion and your superior goddamn education. Oh, there's the one that really cracks me up. Superior education. We all know the same fucking shit. You just know it better because somebody performed a sacrifice in a robe. <laughs> yeah, Kate. <laughs> oh, God. The all-powerful Flash. What a... Please. I wouldn't want to be in control of this crap unless I could tell the truth. And if you're in it, you can't tell the truth. If you could tell the truth, the... Fed wouldn't be praising the Israel. They would, they'd cut Israel fucking off and stop dealing with them altogether. But that's not what the purpose of Israel is in the first place. It's a scam, another scam. We're all being had. All these religious, crazy people think Moses was real. I mean, they don't know how to do a, a, a real history about something and look back and, and admit to themselves, okay, no, there's no invisible man in the sky. So if there's no invisible man in the sky, he didn't do all this book stuff. Gee, wonder who did. Oh, it was a group of men. And here's the part that people really lose me with religion on. Is with religion, the original texts were written in Hebrew <laughs> or what, Latin or some old time you know language which who who in the rl knows what an original bible language would be we got any re well see rob word works would know and we lost rob to the internet world slapped him in the face hmm. anyway hmm. oh yeah how he yeah i really seem to rock old jay dread i got him on ignore so i have to read his crap today i didn't feel like it but he brings out my rabbit side. But you know what? If I if I didn't need it, it wouldn't it wouldn't um, appear. There's got to be a lesson to learn overall through this engagement. You know, this encounter, this engagement that me and Hans have. Uh, but every time I just see him coming out, kind of the on the downside of it, but never. He's always bragging on type about how he whipped my ass in the argument that I never had with him. Because I'm not arguing anything. I'm just telling him, you see it this way, and here's the truth. <laughs> Mabel don't like that. I wonder what that's about. You know, They go, wait a minute. I had to take my grandma to the doctor Tuesday, and you're going to tell me how fucked up the doctor is. You damn right I am. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out of this world, never see another doctor. And I hope I don't get traumatized, because mm, fuck them. I think there's enough knowledge at your fingertips in the world at, to avoid a hospital and doctors and all that shit. And if you're clumsy enough to get hit by cars and cut your toes off weed whacking, then fuck, you deserve to go see a doctor, you clumsy ape. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, then see, I got him. I got him on um, on ignore, so I can't read him. But I can read him through you, Kate. So, yeah, I know it's okay. But see, it's people like that, like you know, the voters, the, those people that seriously want other people dead, for what? Good God, the guy down at the train. His name is Davoud. He's from uh, he's from Iran, or is it Iraq? Now, no, he's from Iran. And he's been here for years, and he says he'd love to go home, but he can't go home because of political problems. And here I am, American. So, you know, I told him, I said, I'm really glad you don't hold anything my country's done to you personal because, you know, I didn't have nothing to do with it. And he goes, yeah, he he understood that. And, and uh, you know, I don't know. I've never seen anything. Every Iranian I've ever met was nice to me. So I, I don't know what to make it. And it's been in uh, in America and Denmark and the UK somewhere. I think I was in England somewhere. And all the Iranian people I've met, just like anybody, I don't know. How do you put a label on somebody by a fucking government in the first place? But, you know, it's an identifying fucking game that we all have been, we've all been indoctrinated and conditioned into playing this crap. And... Uh, it, it's once you take it too seriously, it's fine for identification, you know, like a Dane might hear me say something in the bar and not know, Oh, are you Canadian or are you American? They can't, they don't hear enough English here to know there's a difference. So I'm not insulted. I go, no, oh, yeah, I'm Canadian. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I just kid. I tell them, yeah, I'm American. And they ask me, where are you from? And L.A. And they, wow. And see, their eyes light up and because they, they know the L.A. They've seen you know, either visiting it or through the media or through the Internet or what have you. So their version of where I'm from is way different than mine. Right. And I've still yet to ever tell anybody, oh, don't go to the America. Are you insane? You'll get raped by a gang of niggers. And then the Mexicans will carve all your, chop up all your hair, and tattoo you. And then the the Jews will take all your money. I mean, no, I tell them, hey, you know what? Have a nice time. Just come home when you're finished. You know, don't stay there. It's not a good place to live in for very long, but it's nice to visit. Um, so I've yet to... Uh, but on the internet, fuck America. Because the people I'm writing that to know what I'm talking about. And it ain't the people of the country. It's like, you know, however Hans wants to take all that shit personal, fuck. It, you, you're you supporting a murdering, lying, bankruptcy fucking thief. This guy is... Uh, they did a meme thing on him uh, from some satire site on Minds today. And it said that... Uh, that Trump had filed bankruptcy for the United States of America. <laughs> but they did that in 1933. Was that FDR? 1933? Who? Come on, Kate. Who Who was the president when they did the, uh, the not the Federal Reserve Bank, but the, uh, the birth certificate and all that shit? And it really screwed us over. You know, under the guise of help. Like they always have. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I got to wait 30 seconds to get an answer because I'm ahead of the chat. But uh, we had enough fun with Hansel. Poor Hansel. I wonder if he's going to ever see uh, a good day in his life where he doesn't want other people to be massacred and punished and shot because of some third-party story he read on the Internet. Of course, he calls it proof. You know, that the difference between me and him, I'll pick on him right now, is... Um, his 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 proof threshold is is easier to penetrate than mine. I just because you tell me something, and then just because I see it, that doesn't mean it happened the way you told me. That just means you told me what you believe, and that doesn't always work. You know, disagreeing is not the it's not the the reason to fight. That's what he thinks. I believe. Me, I'm just, I just don't give a shit. And I think you're at fault. I don't think I'm at fault for anything. And if my biggest crime in the world is smoking pot and being lazy, I'm 59 years old. By God, I hope you get old enough as me to do it yourself someday, sport. And I truly do mean that, too. I don't wish any bad on you. 
You know, I hope you get exactly what you want me to have because that's what I wish for you. And I've got life. I got a great life. Life doesn't uh, have me. It has, you know, at times where um, things weren't going my way. But shit, I changed my mind. And apparently the result (coughs) of changing my mind was uh, a different road. So, boom. But if you're on a road that you don't like, and it's making you so miserable and angry and hateful. You don't even like the women in your life. Wow, that I couldn't see that. See, that's another thing. I love the women's. My wife knows that I'm a women lover. I've always just been uh, nicer to the women to, than to the men. There ain't no reason in the fucking world for me to go out of my physical way to be nice to a man. But on the other hand... I'm so nice to women normally that to be nasty to the female, I have to work just as hard so I don't do it. I just do what I normally do. And it's it doesn't bring any rain. I don't really get it. It's very strange life here. I expected um, pretty much the opposite of what I, what I got. But when I first saw it, I didn't really quite understand what I was seeing. I thought I did, which we all do. But, hell, it's been four, we got almost five years together now. So in five years, you learn a thing or two about somebody else. And in the end of it all, you realize that it's just what I see. You know, it's how I interpret what Cirque does. And I can do whatever I choose to do with that. There's the problem I've, I've still got to this day. I can't remember that as a conscious thought all the time. But sometimes... You know, when I fall over and forget, and then I remember, I'm the one looking out. I'm the one feeling shit. It's what I want it to be. So, keep it good. It's not as hard as it sounds. Well, it may be for a prick, but, you know. Oh, let's go back to the chat. I got kind of weird here. I've got 18 minutes, and I did another solo. That's This is pretty tough without... uh, links to read and you know news important news to tell everybody so they can understand the world around them better when i think it's a matter of um, get away from all the crap (laughs) the system's fucking you up with if you can and if you can't um, at least knowing what it is is a stepping stone in the right direction you know you don't always have to take an action but making a decision is the first for me, is when I make my mind up to do something, sometimes it takes years for whatever I've decided to happen. And I might not physically be doing anything anybody else can see, but in in my mind, things are rolling. (laughs) So, you know, it took me two years to get it done in your world, but it didn't take me two years to get it done in my world because I don't live by that clock. I don't care about the only time i recognize the freaking clock is when somebody else circ my birthday something something that brings attention then then i notice the clock or i like the dork table i like to do the dork table at the same time on the same day therefore i need a clock but outside of that it's always circ is coming in on this train and i want to get the dog and takes so you know this amount of time to walk up there with the dog and get the dog a walk and then meet with the wife so i'm back on the clock now how i justify that in my own mind i think is i'm just doing um the maintenance to keep the relationship run, running as smooth as i can you know it's and because it has a clock attached to it i'd still do it anyway so it's secondary but if it was me, oh, if hey, I had to be up at this time of day and over here by that time of day, and I'm done with all that. Can't do, can't do it anymore. Don't what well, can't is kind of cheap. Don't want to. And uh, the living situation just kind of made it so it wasn't necessary, which is really really nice. Let's see what they're talking about, Mister Mister Beetles back yakking with Grimner about something. Let's see. I wish I had those tiny little crackers. It says homemade on it. <laughs> home style. Okay. Yeah, home style is just a way for saying, yeah, made out of crap you shouldn't eat. 
and not to say I don't eat crap I shouldn't eat. I break, yeah, I break my own rules. Of course, they're not rules. They're just more like guidelines. But I think I'm doing better than I, I would make it sound, you know, I'm making it sound a lot worse than it is. Because I'm fairly, I'm fairly active, wouldn't you say, sweetie, over there? Yeah. I'm uh, I'm capable of carrying my own carcass around, you know, with my own uh, without a cane and shit. <laughs> uh oh, Grim, you got salon or mostly goaters, goat heads. What are goat heads? Oh yeah, right. Oh, he lives out in New Mexico, so he's probably got something green growing out there. Uh, hey, sir, I get one more. Uh, well, you know what? It nah. It's late enough, never mind. I was asking my wife to do me a quick favor while I was doing my Dork Table podcast. By God, country. And if you haven't, hey, do a little pitching for other places. If you haven't gone over to um, BitChute yet, it's still young. They're just getting started over there. And there's a, a, a quite a variety, and Grimm's put us all over there. We've got a, a Real Liberty Media page. You can go there and catch all the rerun shows. Because I, I usually listen to Mary on YouTube and catch a rerun. But because now I'm getting partial to this other site, I want to start using that more and get out of, you know, get out of the YouTube habit. But YouTube got me started, you know, when I was new on the Internet. I was a late bloomer with Internet. I didn't give two flying fucks about computers or any of that shit. And then, uh, I don't know what, maybe about 2005 or something in there, something came up and I thought I'd give it a try. And uh, I didn't care for it, but the information was interesting. you know. And I spent more time playing video games on the internet than I did um, with Lynx for about five years, maybe six and then when I got to uh, got to Scotland, I was far away from my children, and they wanted to yak. So I got on this Facebook to keep in touch with them. And well, things went south for me with the kids, and so on and so forth. And eventually, I got booted off of I got booted off of Facebook for far arguing with a relig religious guy about pot. And never went back. Instead of, oh, I uh, do my 30-day timeout. I just said, ah, fuck it. I'm going to delete the account and not bother with anybody. And, uh, well, it's kind of made things a lot easier to be. I tried the Twitter thing, too, for a while. And I don't think I've opened Twitter in a year. Maybe eight months, something like that. What, or it was at least before, uh, when me and Mary were doing the dork table together before the summertime. And I'd still, back in those days, I remember not being interested. You know, if something comes through Twitter, I just have to do... It's one of those things. I, it's a maintenance thing. It's part of the internet. You just got to deal with it. But I'm not going to go open up Twitter like I open up the RLM. Fuck that. Those people... There's too many people. Even mine's... Mine's is not so big, but it's less uh, personal. I like that part of it, is that. There's so much input that I'm not um, I'm not the center of the freaking science so the coder can fuck with me. <laughs> and that's another story we'll tell someday. But I don't get a lot of traffic on on mines, but the traffic that I get are on links that are very anarchist based, you know, freedom based, liberty based. I try my best to stay off the political shit. Oh, Hillary's a cunt. Oh, Trump's a meanie. Oh, blah, 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 blah. You, know, you guys, we got a 15-year-old in the White House with a cell phone. <laughs> he, he fucking Twitters. <laughs> if, if you need to, to, to go any further with Trump after he Twitters, then you're unreachable because you Twitter. And if you believe this is good for us to Twitter, well, you haven't figured it out yet. That's all. In my humble estimation, the way I see the interwebs of life. Mm. Well, maybe not humble, more like mumble. In my in my mumble opinion, uh, g -g 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 -g. I don't know. Well, I've said for the time I've done the dark table is 
Uh, it's just how I see it, you know. And my results suit me. So if you're sitting there on the other side of the radio and your results suit you, there you go. How do you ever explain to somebody else that doesn't already know what it is we're not talking about, this comfortability thing? It's about being good with yourself. You know, If you're good with yourself, you really don't need the rest of the world to approve of you. That's where the organizations and the Fed and all that state and all that horseshit comes in is me seeking approval of the world so I can fit in it. And, eh, I ain't going to bother with any of that. The world can fit in me. How about that? You know, there's enough room in my mind for the shit that's already there and plenty more. <laughs> I learn something new or I discover something old every time I turn the damn internet on. It's never a disappointment in the end. Sometimes it's a pain in the ass to do it, but let's do a little reading. Grimner says, Hillary is a cunt and Trump is a meanie. But that's not politics, just basic facts. Yeah, and, and but that's the problem. See, that's what's so disappointing to me is that's okay with people. And I, I, was, I went to this uh, alternate cigarette store today trying to find something my wonders today and the the guy that runs it i don't know his name i forget his name but his english isn't as good but he's real curious about why i'm i'm still here from california he because i didn't use his shop till about eight or nine months ago so he's only seen me for that period of time but i've been living in the city now for four years <laughs> I'm their token American in Freddy Town. By God, country. Hey, Moose. Moose made it over to realliberty.org. Broke down and put up a page. And I said, hey, Moose, on the RLO. Just letting you know in case you didn't open it yet. It's really small over there, so things are still controllable. They haven't got yet. Uh, Ant did some kind of reset to something that screwed up a little bit of time people are just um need to be reminded you know in so many words that they're they're starting off and they're the coders learning it how to you know work together with the rest of the crew and you know things are just gonna have to take a little patience oh i have to start a new page Ooh, you know all that big five minutes on the internet crap because you know we're spoiled by fucking twitter and Facebook, you know, billionaire people that that can do it however they do it immediately. And then you get these smaller companies that are struggling a little bit and their competition is the guys that can do it properly. <laughs> so there's going to be a little bit of a road. But I do like the RLO. It's fun to go over there. Um, I'd like to see, uh, like the old days when I did a blog and people would make comments and we talk about it for a while that hasn't happened yet there's not a lot of interaction um uh, i think it's uh just the newness of the new site because you know a lot of us were already there we've done this what three four times with some form of world truth because world truth is a great idea but the code the original coder was um he was a disappointment socially and he did a lot of mean mean things to people and he was so good at it he could blame other people for doing the things he himself was doing and it finally caved in you lie enough and eventually you're somebody's going to expose you but he pulled it off for a long long time and basically destroyed the site you know being an egomaniac trying to oh, bless you sweet trying to run everybody else's life and uh it collapsed on him so and is here trying to re kind of because we've all got these old memories of WT and we all know this is you know this is the old WT so you got that worry in your back of your mind if cause is going to be around somewhere <laughs> I know I did for a week but after seeing what they've done with it I don't think cause is anywhere to be seen and I would recommend the RLO to people check it out 
explore the internet world around you but keep it small you know if you're gonna if you're gonna do yourself any favors get the big get rid of the big shit and focus on the small stuff make some fucking uh make some networks you know like meet some people that are like you like Grimner and and rob works with their anti-police stand have made me feel more comfortable with my own anti-police stand but probably for different reasons you know but I do share that we should be responsible for ourselves and not have to rely on some stranger to third party his way through something that may or may not have ever happened in the first place. And with that, I'm going to say we have completed a Doric Table program. Thanks, everybody. And what do we got coming up? We have uh, nothing on Saturdays after me, I don't think. So we're back to, um, we've got blues in the morning when Grim gets up at his um, sleep program. And and he plays those. And then uh, after the blues, then we got trivia. Sometimes he plays blues through trivia, too. So you can hear the music while you're playing the game. I've done that, I think. I'm pretty sure it was... That's what happened. Maybe I'm just high and think I did it. I'm not sure at the moment. And then after the trivia, they got Hal Anthony comes on with Behind the Woodshed. And poor Hal, he was so angry this week. But I understand. But he he hit such a great point with it's darts at administration. All this legal shit we're all facing has a beginning in administration so he started to talk about that it got my attention uh to pursue listening further i hope he goes into it uh, next week again and not so much repeat but that's a better foundation than having to face an admiralty court because things have to be posted to you and administered to them through them from them however that all works and there's protocols if you know the right steps to take in the right way to take them and the right words to say then you can find yourself a free man when other people would end up in a jail cell just knowing how to play the legal game but doing it through the administrative process so anyway, I like to say that thanks, Hal, for all your work, because I can't use it here where I'm at under my situation. But if I ever do, I know where you're at. <laughs> you have links, man, <laughs> links and links and lots of uh, lots of other shit to tell people about besides the law, too. Anyway, after that, we got. Oh, well, then we don't. Then we're back to uh, art and stop. So maybe we can get guilt art to come back take us on one more time you know man up you know do what do the impossible this fucking shit is hard I, I have a hard time doing it myself but i want to do it i don't know why <laughs> i can't explain it and anyway, then we got graham z and the rocket chair program on wednesday night and i'm gonna go out of my way to try to remember to stay up on halloween so i can give her a call and pester her live on her rocket chair program I might ask her first so she doesn't get, you know, completely floored with a incoming call that she doesn't really know how to deal with cuz pushing buttons and Mary can always be entertaining. And then uh after that we got um nothing again Wednesday night we got Mary then uh Friday we got Mary again on the rocket chair and then after Mary on the rocket chair we got Grimner and Moose Girl with the Freaker's Ball. And if the moose doesn't show up, Grimner does balls to the wall. See, I didn't say balls to the floor. You're welcome. And uh, <laughs> thanks, everybody, for playing along. I have no idea what the hell I talked about for two hours, but it was fun. And uh, you guys are, I don't know, you're probably all as half as loony, loony as I am. You just conceal it a lot better. <laughs> so... See you Tuesday night. Oh, Tuesday night. I forgot about my own show. I'm doing In a Perfect World now with um, Rob Works is going to step in and, and do the do it with me. Um, so we've got that going on. And I'm going to close out with that. And I'm going to go to silence because i got to do the thing. Bye, everybody. <laughs>